So, good morning. Uh, my name is Fardad, and I'll be taking care of your OP244 this semester, Object Oriented Programming, Introduction to Object Oriented Programming. Um, as, good morning. As, uh, as you see, I record my sessions, okay? Uh, if you go on YouTube, type Fardad and OP244, decades of video are going to come up. Okay, I've been doing this for a long, long time, pre-COVID, <laughs> not post-COVID. So, uh, in one of the most important thing about recording is that it's not reliable. I love that. I have the exact same thing actually. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. Um, it's, they're not reliable. Things go wrong. Microphones don't work. Um, I delete something by mistake. Something happens. So these are just an extra measure in case you want to review something. You can go and, and, and re-kind of visit the recordings. And some guests of uh, other classes want to take a look at two, look at it too every now and then. So that's, that's what it is. Um, um, as, a, as a student of my class, uh, you have one extra workshop to do more than everybody else. So I call that workshop zero because no one's doing it, it's yours. I think you have received an email from me already or something that tells you what workshop zero is. Uh, go through it, okay, step by step, and uh, make sure that uh, you follow all the steps that are there. Let me see if I have word over here. There is one and one rule only in my class that is extremely important for you to know. And that is to be exact at all times. Okay? You are learning how to, how to program. You started in IPC 144, hopefully successfully, and, and you know how to kind of code C. Um, but one thing that doesn't go with computer science is kind of approximate, okay? If your program kind of works, the airplane kind of flies. And the building kind of not explodes, okay? So things like that happens. And it's, like, it's, it's, it's very important for you to understand that every single thing that you do has to be exact. You have to be obsessive about it. I know your room is messed like mine probably, but when you're writing a program, you have to make sure you have to be obsessive about your code. You have to make sure everything is tidy and clean and nice. And uh, when you're doing indentation, you have to make sure if you choose to have three characters of indentation, it's three, not four, not two, all the time, always, okay? Your code must be clean, nice, organized. And if you don't do it, you're never going to be a good programmer, no matter how genius you are, because you're going to get lost in your own code. And it's, a, and it's an absolute fact. There is nothing behind it. There's no hidden agenda over here. So be exact with your code and be organized. Um, I put that right up there at, at, at the beginning for you to know. So when I tell you, uh, I don't know, uh, good morning, don't be sorry. I'm going to be late sometimes, OK? So, so uh, uh, with, especially with Workshop Zero, OK? It's created like two, three years ago. So when you look at it, some of the softwares may have been updated. You may have some couple of clicks over there that you have to figure out yourself. And if you couldn't figure it out, uh, either talk to me or go on, the, go on the Teams that where we're going to live on. So Microsoft Teams is your friend. I created a team, and I think you're already added to it, OK? And if it's, if it's not, you can simply go to it. Uh, new teams, OK, let's see what it's going to do. Oh, asking me to sign in. All right, and uh, one thing that you need to be respectful is the dot when you're working with the team. 
Uh, and I'm talking about this dot over here. You see that green thing over there? That means you can give me a call. Okay? When the green thingy is busy, don't. Don't give me a call. <laughs> or if it's do not disturb. If it's away, you can give me a call too. I may I'm working downstairs in my workshop or something, and I hear the thing goes off, and, I, and I'll come and I'll give you an answer back. But so, F, so yellow and green is good, okay? Rest, no, do not call, okay? My schedule will be updated by a couple of days to make sure that I have everything set up. And it is completely updated, which means I don't have any office hours, which means everything is done by demand. If you want to talk to me, just find out when I'm free during the week, and book an appointment, and we talk, okay? Uh, but don't book an appointment three minutes from now, okay? The usual thing that the correct way of doing it is to, uh, for me to respond to you in 48 hours. So if you book an appointment, uh, appointment, appointment for tomorrow, it's like 70% chance that I'm gonna reply to you on time. But if you book an appointment two days from now, then you'll see that I accept it and we'll go online and and we talk. Why do I like Teams? Because it's more efficient. You don't have to go to an office to, uh, I don't know, find a place to sit together. You open up your computer. I open up my computer. It's not like that. The way the Workshop Zero is set up is that when you have a problem, your problem is in the repository, your repository. And I, have a col and I am a collaborator of that repository. All you need to do is to put in the definition of the of your appointment, what is the URL for your repository? I literally pull it on my computer. As soon as I open it, I put your work in front of your face, share the screen, you tell me this is wrong. I'll go over there, there's something that's not working. I'll explain to you how to fix it. I'll fix it for you. I'll go through all the things. I push it back up to the repository. All you need to do is to do a pull and get all the changes back. And you do a diff between the two codes all these things that I'm telling you, I especially I'm not telling you anything without, I'm not giving you any explanation just to get used to the lingo, okay? Then you go do a git diff on the code that I just pushed, and you will see what your co code was before and what code is after, and you'll see exactly what the changes are. All you owe me on that to fix your code is to reflect about it. That's all. So in your reflections of the workshop, you're going to tell me, I asked for this help and that. You fixed the workshop. I didn't do the thing properly. I didn't deallocate the memory. I lost the pointer over there, and you fixed it for me. And it's done. OK, so this is how the helps are done over here. I'm, uh, we are in uh, the era that uh, we need to learn how to use technology. So if you have any problem, you go to, I'm going to change the logo over here, make it nice like this one. So, so I'm going to make it, so you're going to go over here, uh, office and thingy, whatever it is, like um, uh, OP244, NA office and help and discussions. You go over there, either you just post a question over here. I did this and it didn't work. The gentleman over there is going to find, look at it and say, I know how to fix that. He's going to answer your question. Or if I see it, I'll answer your question. So we all discuss stuff with each other in this team thing. So uh, please do not post the entire uh, workshop in there or your uh, project in there. If your piece of your segment doesn't work, just you can even put a code snippet over there. I wrote this part of code, and it doesn't work. Anybody knows what's wrong with it. And somebody's going to help you. Like this, we learn to collaborate. Okay. And another more important thing about computer science is collaboration. If you cannot collaborate, you're not going anywhere. And um, you're going to thank me for this GitHub four years from now to learn how to work with Git. Because when in your resume you actually mention that you know how to work with Git, Git and you actually have a repository on Git, and when they, when they Google your name, GitHub comes up that this person has a repository in, in Git, that's a big light bulb. I hired research assistants like that all the time. As soon as I see they know how to work with Git, I know how I know they know how to program, I know they know how to collaborate, and that's the most important thing.
So we do that. And uh, I, if you look at the addendum on the thing, I do not do email. You send me an email, I'm going to reply to you when you graduate. Okay? So you use email for logging purposes, things like uh, I'm in an accident, I cannot come to the final test. You send me an email. So it's kind of a, a receipt or certificate that something happened to you that you can go back to as evidence. Use it like that. Use this for your messaging, which is essentially if you want to send me a message, go to chat, just type far that. My ugly face is going to come up. You click on it and just write a message over there. I get the message. I reply to you. We share information. We share files, things like that. We, we discuss things. And the good thing is that I have a record of my conversation with you in a nice, tidy way throughout the semester. And you have your conversation. I don't have to go search through email and stuff like that. So that's that. There is a phone number that you have. That phone number is this. I put it on, the, on your subject. You have this phone number. If you call this number, my team's actually ring. So uh, if you need to make a call or, again, you are in a dire situation, you want to leave a message, you can leave a message over there. I can uh, listen to it later. So uh, this is a place that we collaborate with and, and, and we work. It's a, it's a very good place. And I actually have, um, a, uh, like, uh, all the OP24 for profs have a team over here, and we collaborate over there like that. So workshop zero, very important. Go through it and try to understand how it works. Be exact. And let's go through the core stuff. Today is lots of, um, I may start talking about OP24 for a little, but we'll see. Another thing that I have to tell you is that I have a class here uh, ending at 11.35. I have a class starting at 11.40 in K building. So unless I have some beaming technology that I can go from here to there, uh, uh, from here to there, uh, I won't be able to be on time. So. Um, I, because OP244 is important, it's creating your basis, you have a priority. I try to leave over here at 11.30, 11.35 at the end of the class, and my other class is going to start 20 minutes late, which is a lab for OP345. Um, uh, I'll let them know. But if I see they have a, an important thing, I may leave your class early at times. So my priority is this class, not the other. Uh, but uh, it may happen, so be ready for it. We good? Courses. OP244. So we have our announcements over here, and you have your first announcement. Welcome to OP244. Please go through it and do what it asks you to do. Um, Announcements come up. It's important I, if, if a class gets canceled. I usually don't cancel, cancel the class. If something happens and I cannot come, we switch online, okay? Uh, which is big blue button that I use. Uh, big blue button is actually a homegrown thing. Uh, I was actually the lead for the research, uh, uh, applied research team that actually worked on the system. So we have lots of Seneca code in it to so use it with pride, okay? Uh, lots of students that I hired from my 344 at the time, it was called, uh, actually contributed to that thing. We have our code in there. And that's down here. So if you see it says emergency online session, this link is broken. I'll fix that one because the, ver the new version is there. So let me just delete and just show you. i um, put it over here. So we are right there right now. So in here, I'm going to say this one. I'm going to add it. Emergency online session and visible to students save. Okay, so you just click on this and you follow the instructions, okay? Um, it's a web-based thing. You can connect it through anything you want, cell phone, uh, tablet, computer. One thing that I ask you, always join with audio. I do not like people who listen over there. 
my class is full, full duplex. You'll learn in ECN data communication later on. Half duplex communication is a communication that uh, is like a radio. You listen to radio. The person talking on a radio doesn't know if it is there any listeners. They have to poll, do a poll and do the uh, analysis to see how many people are actually listening. But a full duplex communication is like a walkie-talkie. I talk and I say, Roger, you don't, and we talk and I hear what you're saying. You say, oh, I got that. So full duplex. And that's what the microphone is over there. Okay? So uh, I have this thing. So that's a talking stick. So I ask questions in class. The person who has the talking stick picks it up and talks, okay? And leaves it to the next person. And it keeps going like that. And sometimes I just move it randomly. When I see somebody sleep, I put it right in front of them so they know that the next person is going to talk. So these things are going to happen. And we, we do that at all, all times. Um, it's like, a, think of it as a game. If you're not in a mood, they pass and you give it to the next person. No hard feelings. Um, if you don't know the answer, say, I don't know the answer. You are not supposed to know the answer. You're students. If you knew the answer, what the heck you're doing here, right? So don't be ashamed if you cannot, if you don't know the answer. Try your best to answer. If you can't, you just say pass and uh, give it to the next victim. Are we good? That's that. Uh, So um, the study notes are here. You know what it is. You, have, you had it on IPC. When you click on it, it goes to the, what we have over here. So these are the things we are going to follow. Um, I'll try to follow the schedule as tight as I can, but not necessarily it happens all the time. I go by fast. And the good thing is that I'm, I have only one OP244 this semester, which means we can run wild. I don't have any other class to sync with. So. Wherever you take me, if you go slow, I'll go slow. If you go fast, I'll go fast, okay? So that's what we're going to do. One of the things that I don't like is covering everything. I like you to understand what you've been taught rather than go through the topic and say, the heck with it, they have to learn. So you will see. We're going to go forward, and hopefully we're going to learn it all the way through. Anything I do in class is going to be in on GitHub. What a big surprise. So. OP244 NNA notes, it's right there. It's going to be in this folder, OK? So anything I do in class, I immediately push it over there. So any code that I write over here, you don't need to write. For all these people, all the people who are here for, uh, with uh, computers, I like you. I like you. I like you. I like you. Kind of like you. Um, we have one language processor. Human beings are not multitask, OK? No matter what you say, unless you have some genius thing that, like Elon Musk, you can do 50 things at the same time, uh, we have one language processor. As soon as your hands are on keyboard and looking at the screen, you're gone. You're not listening. If you think you are actually taking notes, you're not. You are not listening to me. You are trying to t write type over here what I talked about five seconds ago and you're going to miss the next five seconds. Note taking, however, is a completely different thing. That's analog. This is digital. With an analog system, you have to translate what I'm saying to muscle stuff and put it over there. It actually gets com committed to your long-term memory. Computers don't do jack. Okay? You think you are taking notes? You're not. Be my guest. I gave you my advice. Whatever you believe in help you if I see you're smiling at your screen. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you with a, like an angry face, I see you smile at your screen, everybody loses their thing. I'm going to say laptops closed. I'm not going to say who did it. You're going to lose if anyone else laughs at their screen. I don't want you to go through your TikTok schmick talk on a thing and watch, I don't know, cats coughing furballs in class. If you do want to do that, by all means, just get out of the class and do whatever you want to do. You come over here. That's, and that's uh, one thing that I, that I always tell you. Uh, I always tell to my students, say you go to a restaurant and you order a burger and you pay for it. And then you leave. Does that make sense? That's what you do if you come to class. You just leave and don't listen. You pay for it. And believe me. You've paid for it yearly, and you're going to pay it. If you have a student, you're going to keep paying for it for a long, 
long, long, long, long, long, long time. So get what you have paid for. Bug the professors you professor you have. If they don't teach, take them by the cover and tell them, well, I need to know this thing. I didn't understand. Don't be shy. If something's wrong, extract it from your teacher. I do live coding in class, OK? So I turn on my visual studio, and I code, and I talk. I'm going to make boo-boos. I'm going to make mistakes. And I'm not shy. Your ear, ear pod thing you went on the, yeah. So, so you're going to see me making mistakes, and I have 30 compilers sitting over here. So you're going to tell me that's wrong, and I'll fix it. And if we can't, we fix it together. We're going to debug it. And if I cannot even debug it in class, even better. We have something to think about. I'll go home, and I'll try to find out what the mistake was. You're going to get an announcement on, on Teams that, hey, the problem I had in class and I couldn't fix, I'll fix it. That shows you that somebody who's been programming for 30 years and teaching it for 25 years makes mistakes and cannot fix at the time. Don't be shy. You are supposed to make mistakes. Programmer, the pro, a programmer that cannot, does not make mistakes doesn't exist. OK? It doesn't happen. And if you want to shoot yourself in the foot, go ask ChatGPT. There's no problem with that. Too. OK? Uh, and, and it's just, uh, again, you are losing your money. OK? That thing's not going to be with you at all times. And, so yeah, be aware of it. So everything's got to go up here. So essentially, how what I do, I open up Visual Studio, as you see like this. And three years later, when it opens, I'm going to say create a new project. You're going to see me create these projects for first few sessions, just for you to see how it's done. And then after that, I'm going to make it ready and just open, so we don't have to go through it. So I'm going to have an empty project, see project, Windows console application. I'll go next. Then I'm going to, uh, today is uh, uh, September 3rd, right? So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say write 01, September 03, uh, that's today. Then I'm going to go to the repository that I have on this one, which is here. This is the clone of the repository we have on GitHub, OK? And so what happens is that I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say select the folder. And I'm going to say place solution and project to the same directory. And I'm going to say create. And three years later, it creates the, repo the, the solution for me. And oh, start program with Copilot. Good. All right. So, <laughs> all right, so I'll go over here. I'm going to right click add new item. And I'm going to usually call it prg.cpp. And in here, I'm going to say include IO stream using namespace std and see uh, oh, int main return zero. And in here, I'm going to say what? See out hello OOP244NAA. Oh, that's not the one. This is the one. And I'm going to go to new line. I'm going to compile and run it. Three years later, it compiles. You see the output comes up. And it says, yay, it worked. Now it worked. Well, well we are careful not to fall. Then what we're going to do, we're gonna, I'm going to go to the same directory. So right click on the name of the solution, open folder in File Explorer. And I'm just going to come over here and right click over here. And I'm going to say commit. And I'm going to say add all that is needed to be added. I have a .git ignore file in my repository that tells the git what needs to get ignored. So I don't have to worry about executable being passed by. It only puts the uh, C++ codes up on the GitHub. So as you see, when I said add all, what is actually adding over here is the solution, vcxproj, vcxproj feature, filters, and prg.cpp, and nothing else. So I'm going to say over here, mm, uh, hello uh, thingy, OK? And I'm going to say commit and push. And done. If I go right now into the repository over here and refresh, 
you will see that in NAA, I have September yada yada. And if you click on the code, you can see the code. It's right there. And what you can do, you can clone this on your computer. So as soon as I do that, you do a pull. Pull is a smart download. Pull, it means just download the changes. So it updates whatever I have over here uh, right on your computer. And you can see exactly what I have done, what is changed, and what is not. Very simple and straightforward. There's nothing hidden about it. Well, we'll go through it step by step. So that's how you see the content going up on the, up on the thing. So anything that I do over here is right over there. Everything's recorded. So if you want to take notes, take notes. Your choice, but uh, ah, you heard what I said. So that's course notes. Faculty information. My information right there, methods of communication, Microsoft Teams messaging, office hours by appointment based on MS Teams schedule. I even put a video for that, how to book a meeting. Okay? Lots of people just book meetings. You have to use scheduling assistant. Scheduling assistant, you add the name of the people. Let's say you, your friend, and me, you want to, you want to go talk about something. You want to book an appointment. Five of us, we want to talk, whatever. I put the name of all the attendees over there. Then it shows you who is available at which time. So you can select the free time for all and then submit it. Go through it. Uh, I'll sh um, anything that I'm talking about, I made a video for it, how to video. You'll see that. But again, that video was made four years ago, so there might be little bit changes here or there. But the gist of the information is the same. Online office and help. You click over here, it brings, up to, brings you up to the Teams. It brings this one up. So as long as you click, as soon as you click on that one, it, it brings you over here. You can send me a message, ask friends and uh, uh, teammates how things are happening. Um, so that's that. Weekly schedule. So this is the weekly schedule. This is what we go through, and these are what we suggest that you read. We have total of 10 workshops. Uh, change it this summer. No more two-part workshops, things like that. And the workshops are a bit different. The workshop is guided, which means you go through the description of the workshop. You should be able to do it yourself. Okay? There is a catch for it. You can only submit it in the lab. It won't accept submissions from outside of the lab. So you have to be in the lab, on a desktop, from the lab, not on your computers. It won't accept that. And you have to log into Matrix, only one terminal client. You cannot have two terminal clients. It has to be only one. And then you do the submission, then it accepts it. Okay? If you do it in the lab, you get 100% of the mark. So you can start, and the workshops are posted three four as long as we can before. <laughs> so you can have everything ready on your matrix and just come to the lab and just do a click and, and submit. Okay? It's as simple as that. There's no problem with it. But you can also come to the lab with problems. If you had problems, fix it. It is designed for the lab to be able to be done in 25 minutes, but it doesn't mean you should start it in the lab. Try to finish it and come to the lab. And as soon as somebody submits their lab, they become a lab assistant. We stand up, go help others. Okay? You submit your lab, you go and see who has problem with their labs and help them. Okay? That's a rule that we follow in here. Don't be shy. Just go and help. Next thing is quiz. We have so 10 workshops. We have a DIY section that is just for you to have extra practice. So it's a problem. That students come to me. What can I do to uh, more practice. I want something to do more practice with. That's the DIY section. You don't submit it. You can check with the submission, see if it's okay, correct or not. But when you are submitting, it says testing. It's not going to submit. No email goes to anywhere. Nobody's going to say. It just tells you it was successful. You did it right, or you had problem with it. That's all. That's all it does. So the DIY section is not submitted at all. You don't submit anything. Okay. You have one workshop to do and one reflection per week, and that's it. Okay. Um, and the workshops are not supposed to be uh, 
homeworks to be done after with the something with due date. You can start working on it right now and submit it later on. Or come to the lab and we'll do it together. But preferably, start, start it at home so you have something to work with when you're coming to lab. And you will see, you do that, your life will be much easier and you're going to pass the subject like that with higher than something that be and a B and a B plus. So I guarantee that if you actually follow that. Quizzes are all in the lab in my section. I don't know who, what other people do. So uh, quizzes are uh, a little uh, tricky. We have an uh, alternative uh, way of doing quizzes. So the first quiz that you're doing in class is all concept, OK? Answering uh, on concepts that we had before. When I say concepts, it's not just asking you what is polymorphism, it's not something like that. It fill in the blank. I may give you very short walkthroughs with one letter output to see if you understand what a constructor does. You don't understand what I'm saying when I say constructor, but you'll find out soon. So all these things you're gonna you're gonna do. It's concepts, simple thing. Quizzes are 10, 15 minutes max, and you do it in the lab, okay, on a computer. Next quiz, quiz number two, is programming, which means you are writing a very short targeted program for 10 minutes. I'll give you a code that is written, and I ask you to add a functionality to it. So that's it. Not entire programs. I ask you to write single functions that does this very simple, small little task to do. Okay? If you have done the workshop at home and came and submitted, you can do those quizzes very easily. Okay? So quizzes that are uh, odd, one, three, five, seven. These are concepts. So even ones, two, four, six, these are programming. Okay? So every two weeks, they alter. Topics on what we have. So if I'm having a quiz in week two, it's on OOP, object oriented terminology, and modular programming, nothing else. And I'll try to make the quizzes focus too, which means, uh, of course, I cannot say, oh, you learned for loop in IPC 144, no for loops in 244. I'm not going to do that. We are using the concepts that you learned before, but they are not focus of the workshop. Okay? So I'm not going to ask you to do 50 things. I want to see if the last thing that I thought you understood or not. Okay? So you will see there is one skill that I don't know how far did you take it in IPC 144. If you didn't take it, you have to pick it up now, is reusing code. You're going to see many, many times I'll tell you this function is written at functions and works perfectly. This is the specifications of the function. Use it to do that. So you don't even have the source code of the function. I'm going to say this function will do this and that and do this to do that one. So all you do, you call that function and the rest of the work you do it. Reusing code is key. We're going to do it over and over and over and over. That's the, so it says project release over here. Project's got to get released much earlier. I'm not going to make the project like we have done it last semester. So the project is going to have two submissions only. And uh, um, it, that's a lie. Uh, it's going to have more submissions, but I break down the submissions into small pieces so, so you don't get frustrated. So if part one of the workshop is you're supposed to submit it, you, I divide into three different submissions to check three different aspects of it. So if you successfully did two of them, you get two-thirds of the mark. Okay? And there are going to be milestones for the project. The milestone is to keep you on track. Um, you put your behind on the seat, you procrastinate. That's the rule of, of, of being a student. All students procrastinate. So those one milestones are just there to tell you, hey, you should, you should do the work. Milestones have very loose due dates. So if I tell you the due date of this milestone is this week, you have an extra week to, to. So I'll still give you some time to procrastinate. But, but uh, if you submit it, those milestones are not, uh, are not uh, marked or you get, you get feedback on. You just submit it and you get the mark for it. That's all. So it kind of keeps you in track, very simple thing. So you can do this stuff gradually instead of piling it up on the last day and then panic and then can't do it, okay? So I'll try to make it as easy as possible to reduce the workload at home so you can study more, okay? 
we'll try to make the project as simple as possible to focus on what we want to learn and not very difficult. Um, haven't done the project yet. I have to start working on it. Um, but you'll see it. We have a midterm and a final. Our midterm and final happen. Uh, so this final test on 14, it has to come to 13 for us. Because our lab is on Thursday, correct? And the last day of school is on Wednesday. So your final test is on week 13. And then the review happens afterwards in this class as the last session. OK? So your final test is on week 13, not on 14. I'll update this weekly schedule to reflect accordingly. <clears throat> Course information. We have the addendum over there. Open it up, understand it, read it, and see exactly what it says and what are the, uh, and what are the important stuff on it. So all the things that I talked about, by appointment thingy, everything's there. So workshops only 10%, projects only 10%. So non-proctored non -proctored marks is only 20%. If you are one of the cheaters, you can only cheat for 20% of the mark. The rest can, can cheat, but it's challenging. <laughs> so these are all done in front of us. So 15% for quizzes, 25% midterm, and 40% for final. Final is a test. They are all tests. And this, these two tests, they have a weighted average. Okay? If you don't understand what a weighted average is, the mark of test one multiplied by 25 divided by sum of the two. That is 65. Mark of test two multiplied by 40 divided by 65. That should be higher than 50. Okay? That is a pass. The overall is a pass, you're a pass, okay? That's what it is. If you don't submit your project, it's an incomplete. And that's the only possible way that you can get an incomplete, where you have to go. And that's only if your, if your average with that project not submitted is higher than 50. So if you don't submit your project, then you have 45% average. Sadly, it's a, it's a fail, okay? But again, uh, these are all things that I have to let you know. And and I have a very high rate of success in my class. Okay, so statistically be happy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I think in the addendum I actually fixed that. Yeah, so in the addendum is correct. As you see over here, it says final test is in here during the lab time. And week 14. We have a final test review. So if you want to know how, how you have done, you can come to the class and we'll go through the final test and see how it's done. Did I put you to sleep? Deep coma? Not yet? OK. These are boring parts of the thing. GitHub organization is what I told you. Uh, how to see C++ core subject. I put this thing for all students at Seneca. So this is essentially your workshop zero. Well, workshops, your workshop zero has one extra thing at the end that you add a private repository and add me as a collaborator. Okay? That's what I asked you to do. And this is, this is voluntarily for other students in other sections. If the prof choose to uh, use GitHub for uh, help and stuff there can use it. But uh, for me, this is your workshop zero with one, uh, one step less than workshop zero. So if I, let me see. I, I hope I didn't screw it up. So you see, it doesn't have the 12th step over here, step over here. So yours has one more that actually uh, asks you to create a private ripple. And um, <clears throat> killer cat or Cat killer is not a good user ID for GitHub. Okay? This is gonna stay for you with you forever. And hopefully when you're a CEO of a company, you don't want your GitHub to be a cat killer. Okay? Okay? Uh, things like so. So be wise now when you're in college, when you select stuff to represent you. I know you wanna look cool to that lady or look cool to that gentleman, and you write stuff over there and do things internet never forgets be careful okay i give you as an advice okay 
So comments, the things that you make or you do, it never goes away. It's there for somebody to find. So I'm not scaring you. I'm just telling you, uh, I don't know. Cool dude probably is a good idea if you can find it. I think probably it's already taken. There's no problem with that. But again, don't put things that, you, you, like when you want to sell, so just write down the username and go back and take a look at it and see what it is. Have your profile on GitHub complete with your first name, last name, where you study at, and all these things. Make yourself visible on internet. Resumes are only looked at when your Google search comes up positive. <laughs> Remember that, okay? Make yourself visible on internet. Be active on GitHub, okay? And I'll tell you how to be active. We're gonna go through it and you'll see. So all the quizzes are going to appear over here. You're gonna see all the marks of the quiz. You don't see that, it's not visible for you, but you'll see it. Midterm and final, I have no documents to give you. These are the information for the uh, from Seneca for you to see what are the resources and Seneca resources go through them, please And you uh, remember that this is emergency online session you click on this one and you join the session when it's posted all right uh, Did I miss anything? Let me check oh Mac users. Yes, so if you have a Mac Okay, I'll try to help you. I'll try to help you. Try in double quotes, bolded, bold and red. Okay, in italic. Uh, I, I am not a. I do not like. I if you have, if you have any Linux machine, I'm I'm all with you. Okay, Mac is against my religion. Okay, I don't like that company. They're bullies. They're, I don't like them. Okay, it's just I don't like them. Okay, that's why. Like my daughter has, like I have, a, I had a MacBook Pro. My daughter is using it with lots of, uh, what is that thing? Like Taylor Swift things at the back. She's a Swifty, so so she's using that. And um, yeah, but I, I, thankfully, I was uh, um, uh, influential enough to uh, have her an Android instead of a instead of a Mac. So. So I can help you. I put stuff over there so to, to, tell, uh, to tell you that to tell you how it works. Uh, one, one important thing is that don't take sides. What I just told you is just a joke. If I don't know how to work with Mac, that's seriously all joke. You'll see, uh, I, I, um, if you look at all the videos I made on Mac, I actually opened up Xcode and showed you how to compile and do stuff with Xcode. So I'll give you some hints on that. But because I'm not experienced on it, I won't be able to help you like I do with Visual Studio in two seconds. And go research and see what is the percentage of Mac, uh, PC users in the world. That's your clientele. If you limit yourself to your Mac because it's cool, you're not going to have as broad as a spectrum to work with. And for me too. Okay, so in this class, by curriculum, we teach stuff on, on, on Visual Studio. We have iOS development that it's only Mac. There is no Windows thingy over there. So, Fusion VMware. Fusion VMware is, uh, for Mac users, it is a virtual machine. So you can install a virtual machine on your computer. Uh, Mac people, anybody knows what is a boot camp? No, not the Mac. Oh, you are a Mac user. So, yeah, so, so boot camp is to have your computer split in two and put Windows on it so you can boot, it, uh, boot into either. The problem is that it cost, cut the resources in half. You lose half of your hard drive. Okay? The good thing about VMware is that uh, you can set it to use all the resources of your machine. But you can simply shut it down and go back to your Mac on a, or to minimize it to go to your Mac. A virtual machine is essentially a window that is a PC on your Mac. You install Windows on it, you don't go through, you don't install MS Teams on it, you don't install email on it, because all you need to use that one is for your C programming, C++ program. So you install the Windows on it, you install Visual Studio on it, you install Git on it, 
So you go through all the workshop zero on that virtual machine, uh, but the rest of the stuff remains on your Mac. And uh, everything's going to work perfect. So you can learn Visual Studio and then minimize it or shut it down and go back to your beloved Mac with no problem. Okay? I strongly suggest you do that. And for students, it's free. Okay? Um, can we use VS Code somewhere? Because we have a... VS Code is an editor. It's like you're asking me, can I use Notepad? Of course you can. VS Code doesn't do any compilation, nothing for you. It doesn't, it, it gives you some help. It's like Notepad++, but much better. My wife is a Mac user, and she develops everything on VS Code. But the things she's doing is not C++. And it doesn't, so you can, again, you can use any flavor of anything that you're comfortable with. Some of you are much more savvy on your computers than I am. If you can figure it out how to do the stuff that I'm asking you to do on any platform, by all means, as long as you have your GitHub repository, I don't care. I'm going to get your code. I'm going to open it in my Visual Studio, help you close it, and give it to you back to you. Then you go back to your Xcode. As long as we have that medium between us, that GitHub, I don't care what you're using. Use Ubuntu. I would love you. Use uh, some Linux flavor. I don't know, Red Hat, Fedora, whatever you like. I don't care. As long as you can do your work. The problem is that you come to me, my Xcode doesn't work. Last time I used it was when I made that video. I don't know. I can't help you. Then you have to come to this gentleman. That helps you. You could like that. He knows everything. <laughs> okay, so, so, so yeah. And you can always chat on the thing and discuss on, on the teams to see how things go wrong. Again, with Mac, I cannot help you with your hardware and your software setup in detail because, okay, on Mac, I can do everything in command line, like I'm using Linux because it's a Unix environment. It's a Linux environment. It's a Unix-like environment. Anything that you see or whether that I say you can do on Linux or Unix, you can do it on your terminal on Mac, no problem. But it's all command line. You cannot do visual things. The reason I like visual stuff for Git is that Git is extremely complicated. There is, I, I have known no one who knows Git completely except Linus Torvald that is, it's built, <laughs> okay? So no one knows it completely. I use only five little things out of it, okay? So uh, what I'm saying is that when I use a mouse, you just need, you just know the terminology, what push does, what pull does. So first you understand the concept, and as you go little by little, you go into command line and you get better. It's like I first teach you how to use it as a car with an automatic transmission, and then when you get better, now we go to stick, okay? So now you know how to drive, all you need to focus to see how that clash thingy works on a thing that go, okay? So things like that. But when you start from command line, although I respect it, it works very good, I don't want to focus on Git, I want to teach C++. I want to use Git to teach you C++. I don't want it to stand in our way. That is why I like uh, the, the tortoise Git that we have on Windows. I, I think we had something on, on Mac. If somebody can find out some kind of a shell that does it with GUI on Mac, then by all means, use it. So these are the things. Long time ago, I had a habit of doing a review for IPC 144 for OP 244 students. So we would uh, go at home, sit at our computer at 8 o'clock in the morning, do a session till 4 o'clock in the afternoon, like seven hours back to back go through everything IPC 144 kind of wake students up and tell them, fill in the blanks. Uh, any favor that you do over and over, it becomes a responsibility. <laughs> so they actually ask me, oh, when is going to be the, 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 the review for IPC? So I did it for my students, so I stopped doing it and post a recording. So these are the recordings. So probably each one is like three hours long, okay? Um, um, if anybody was capable of actually, uh, let me see if it's here correctly, yes. So that's the, and they, these are the codes for it. If anybody actually went, because if everything is in there, I started from very beginning, hello.c, and I went to pointers and two-dimensional strings and everything. So I went through the whole IPC 144 in a day. So 
people have a stronger base when you're coming. So when I'm teaching about inheritance, you don't think, oh, how the devil that whole for loop works? I don't want that. I want you to only think about that. OK, so it's there if you want to go through it. Uh, it's helpful. Uh, anything? Oh, uh, let me just go back in here. So office is here. I'm going to change this to this logo. Actually, this is good. I don't know if I'm going to post my schedule over here. I have doubts. We'll find out. So it's empty. We'll see if I, if I put it up or not. Um, I had some problems with it once. So we'll see if, if it's not, I'm going to remove the schedule. Okay? If you want to know where I am, look at Microsoft Teams. You, have, you can look at my schedule over there. Everything's there. Redundant stuff just makes things wrong, OK? Make things go wrong. That's why Git is good. Students usually, when they have a problem, they copy the whole project. They make a copy, then they start changing. They have the old one just in case. And then they create it, and they end up with five different copies, and they forget which one did what. The good thing is that Git watches you and keeps track of all the changes. You can literally say, I want to go back to the version that I had before breakfast three days ago and see what was it. And you can see what the differences were. So it's, it's as good as that. It's like kind of big brother watching. It watches all your things. So remember these, when you go through the, uh, the workshop, remember these words. Commit and push over and over. It's extremely important. Each commit that you are doing, you are telling to get to take a snapshot of the current state of my work that you can always come back to. Every single commit takes a snapshot of the current status. And you can labor it. Go into the washroom, commit. You go and come back. So when you screw things up, you say, it happened right before I went to the washroom. Go with it, and you check it. Okay? And you can see what well, you can actually revert back to, to that and then continue again. You can undo your work and continue again. It's as powerful as that. Okay? And push. So essentially, Git is like this. You create one master repository on a computer. Now, a smart comp when Git came out, a smart company said, wait a minute, let me create a company that, own that hosts those master repositories. So everybody, instead of having a computer at home, they can put it on GitHub. And that's what happened. So you create a master repository on GitHub, and then you clone it in different places. You can clone it on your computer, and you work on it. Every commit that you are doing, it commits it to your local computer. As soon as you do a push, it gets all the changes and applies it to the master. So you can go somewhere else. You pull it over there. So before you want to get help from me, you do a commit and a push. I'll go on my computer. I do a pull. I see the whole history of your work. I see exactly what you have done and how you got to this point. Then I'll fix it. I'll commit and push. All you do is a pull to get everything from the master repository. Then you see how I fixed your code. And it's very helpful. I think I'm at the end of my introduction down to here. Questions? Suggestions? I think you're already there. You're not? Let me take a look. Or maybe I didn't add you guys. But if you, if you uh, request to join, I would be able to add you. I think that's how it is, right? When you go in, it's, does it have a request to join? No, if you, if you request, usually that's what, I, that's what happens. When you request, a request comes up. Didn't I add? Let me just take a look. How, I have third, who did I add in here? <laughs> Anybody got added in here? No. Did I add OP345 in here by mistake? Holy crap, I have to, okay. Uh, did I just do that? One who were not here? Anyone? See their name here? Did I 
Oh, I, I don't think I added Ashton here. Did I add Ashton here? Oh. oh, my God. Okay, so I know Ashton. Ashton is actually a very good friend of mine. <laughs> He's one of the most active students you can ever see. So, okay. I cannot, I was, I'm so proudly, I've done this that I thought, so probably I, by mistake, I got the old, uh, the old thing. You're right, I actually see that. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Now they are confused. They're like, wait a minute. Why am I being removed? Okay, who's this? Okay, all right. Woo! <laughs> So I used to when you like so when you say request to join, it says you need a code. Yeah, so it says you have to join the team with a code. So the, when you go to the team. Let me see. Let me see if I can find the code here. Uh, pending request. There you go. So I just accept. I don't think you need a code. There you go. Just, to, just request and I add it. Who's Flora? Thank you for having a picture over there. Okay. All right. So, so, so keep doing that, and I'll, <laughs> and I'll add you. Probably it's gonna give me a. So, but, but anyways, ju just click on and let me see if there is a code. No, but you should be able to submit. But let me see if I how do how can I get the. I want, I've, I've never done it with the code. I don't know where to do it. What if I pause the recording now? So now, please join the team. And thank you very much for letting me know, madam. All right. So I was, I was saying questions, suggestions, objections. Very good. Yes, sir. Go on Teams and mention it so everybody knows it. Write in detail. Thank you very much. Stuff like this is amazing. So VMware didn't work for some. We use Schmiggly Dinghy that I have no idea what it is. Put it over there with link and stuff. Yeah, thank you. Make yourself known to everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's that. Any other question? Yes. Linux is used a lot? Yeah, Holy like, mother. Like so I have, I have a Linux VMware on my machine, yeah. and so I have a Windows machine, and I have a Linux VMware, and I do my stuff on Linux all the time, yeah. Linux is, Linux is, okay, um, it's a different ball game. It's uh, like, I, th it, I think a vast majority of all servers in the world are Linux. My car runs on Linux. So I'm telling you, this is, yeah, this is something that you need to. Okay. Anything else? Questions, suggestions? Uh, one thing. My name is. Um, it's it's difficult to like when I'm in, speaking in English. I sp I pronounce my own name wrong. I say my name is for that, which is absolutely wrong. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Fardod. Okay, Far. Dot. So F A R D A D. So what for that will do? But well, please don't go with my last name. Don't go, Mr. Sorry, Manlu. Don't call me professor. I don't have a PhD. Don't do that. For that is good. Um, and uh, there is one thing that I always mention to to students that uh, I think from my attitude you can get. I'm not one of those uh, like strict strict professor thing and come to the class like. And uh, I'm trying to be a friend. Okay, so for this friendship to work, I must be a good friend, you must be a good friend for a friendship to work. To me, for me to be a good friend in this relationship is to provide you with what you want in this class. And for you to be a good friend is to try, I'm not telling you to be, to try to be a good student. If I'm a bad teacher or you're a bad student, I cannot hold the relationship. Why? Because if you cheat 
in a test. I'm going to say because we had the cof coffee in cafeteria, I'm not going to report it to the AI. That's not going to happen. So any breach, that friendship goes away. And I hate that. That's the worst thing. It rarely happens in my class. I have to tell you, it's a very rare thing, but I have to mention it. OK? Are we good? Are we OK? Time. 10.58. Anybody's tired and wants to get a break and we come back and do something? Or you want me to go and, and finish a little early? So, so, huh? Yeah, okay, good. Break it is. Okay, so I'm going to, one important, two things that I want to ask. You see this light? I tried to put it out. You see this light over here? If it blinks, let me know. That means the battery is going off. Like, sometimes it goes off and, and I do and I have no audio. Okay. <laughs> So please let me know. Uh, please remind me to get my microphone back at the end. Uh, we haven't started yet, so it's actually pointing at a gentleman over there. Uh, uh, the next thing, please remind me to unpause. You, are, you have no idea how many times we do go for a break, come back, and we don't record. It's, 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 it stays like that. So remind me to unpause. Break, break. Five minutes, we come back, we talk about object orientation, and then we go. We're going to learn in the next 20 minutes. Now, thank you very much for everybody coming back and being quiet. Uh, we're going to learn what object orientation is, and we're going to learn how to do it in the next three months. So understanding what it is um, is pretty straightforward. So let me tell you first what the definition of object orientation is. Object orientation is a simulation of how things act in real world in the computer. Why? Because that's how brains function. Our brains function that way. Therefore, we can do complicated stuff. With programming languages like C, we can go so far, but not enough. Because the code becomes so complicated that we cannot simply organize our thoughts about it. Have you heard that they say, I have this manager, he likes to micromanage things. Anybody knows what does that mean? What is micromanagement? Going. Uh, when you... Um check every single task a person is doing, like for example. By yourself. But yeah, like your manager checks every, every single thing you do and change a little. Fantastic. So you know it's you next time, right? Okay. So micromanagement is this, like I have a restaurant, okay? My job is to manage the restaurant. I'm gonna hire a chef, I'm gonna hire servers, I'm gonna hire uh, uh, people to do whatever, like, Somebody to clean up the table, somebody to clear up. But the thing is that if I keep going poke my nose in the chef's business or keep fiddling around on things that I'm not supposed to, I'm not going to be able to manage the thing anymore. And this is good for one restaurant. But imagine if you have your, the owner of McDonald's. Can you go to every single McDonald's and see how people are flipping burgers over there? It's impossible. You create things, functional things, that they work as a unit by themselves. You just design them probably properly and you say, shoo, everything works. Right? All right. How do we deal with this thing in, 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 in C language? In C language, we say write everything in functions. Right? Package the things that you want to do in a function so you can reuse the function over and over so you don't have to do work again, right? So we would say, if you have a structure for a student, if you want to print that student, you create a function, PRN student, and you pass a pointer of that student
and you print it. And if you are a good programmer, you make it a constant. My lady, what is the difference between this and, and C language? If you were to do that in C language, what was the difference? Do you remember? I did it in C++. It's very similar, but something's missing. Do you remember what is that? No. You can pass it. Actually, let's go back. It's easier. Pass it to the lady over there. Oh, another thing. If you see three passes, somebody can come to rescue. OK? So do you see what is different in here with, with what we have done over here and what we do in C? I don't care what's inside. Um, I'm going to guess. Is it that in C we have construct student? Yes, thank you very much. You got half a percent mm -hmm. for your midterm. OK. That's what I do, <laughs> OK? You do answer stuff that make, gives me goosebumps. You get extra marks for your stuff all the time. So it's not only a game. And I forget about it. So you have to mention to me, Fart, I don't remember. You said half a percent. Mm -hmm. That half a percent is different, difference between an A and an A plus. Remember that. OK? OK? And uh, another thing that I have to mention quickly, I let the math to be done by Blackboard. If you get 79.99, that's a B plus, not an A. Remember that. I never add anything because I did it once and it hell broke loose. So, so I had a very good student, got 88%, and I made it 78%, uh, I made it an A, and I had to go and add 2% to every single class, person in class. I'm not going to do that anymore, OK? So when I say it, really, it means, OK? Let's make it like a 1% so it's easier. Yeah, OK? So <clears throat> that's that. So again, in C++, any structure that you create, it becomes a type. You don't need to write struct again. OK, so if you write struct student, student becomes a type, like an integer. OK, you, can, you don't have to say struct student pointer SPTR anymore. You just say student pointer, and that's it. One less thing to do, right? <clears throat> so you did something like this, and you pass the student, and you print the student somehow in here. I don't care how. Are we OK? All right. Why did I make it a constant? So that, so that you can't change it in, inside of the function. Pass it back. Why don't w I want to change it inside the function? Stupid questions there. What was the question? Why? Gotcha. OK. Why did I make the constant? He said, because you don't, you don't want to change the student inside the, inside the function. And I say, why don't I want to change the student inside the, inside the function? Why wouldn't I? It's a very stupid question, and it requires a very awkward answer. So I don't have awkward answer. Yeah, I'll tell you what the awkward answer is. Because I'm saying print. I named the function print. You print something, you don't change it. There is no syntax rule in here. It's just common sense. OK? You don't print something and change it. I cannot say, can I, can I copy your notes and I get and start doing stuff in it? You're going to get pissed. You don't want to that, right? So this is what happens. So, what you intend to do is extremely important. Be careful. Naming is very important, and following what your name is supposed to do is important as well. Are we good? Back to what I wanted to say. So I create a function, I pass the student to it, and I display the student. Hence, I wrote a structure program. OK? I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't worry. I'm not going to come poke you in the nose or something. Close your eyes. I want to imagine it is 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're in deep, sound sleep. You picture that? You hear, hello. You think you're dreaming. You hear, hello. You open your eyes, and nobody's around. You turn on the light, and you hear, hello. Nobody's around. What happens? You can open your eyes and really tell me. Probably you're going to dirty your pants. <laughs> what just happened? 
you had a function that didn't have an owner. You realize what just happened? You just saw something, you, you see something is happening, but it doesn't have an owner. Now replace that scenario. You say hello, and you open your eyes, you see it's your seven-year-old daughter over there that is scared, wants to come sleep with you. Now because, ah, there is no problem, because the hello thingy now has an owner. That's rule number one of object orientation. Every action must have an owner. We don't say, give the student to pr get printed. What we do, we say, student, print yourself. And I don't need to pass anything to it. If your nose itches, you're not going to itch your friend's nose. You're going to itch your own, right? So you know where your nose is, I hope. Right? It's the same thing. Print knows it belongs to a student. So when it says print, it prints that student, whatever that student is. Structures can own actions in C++. In C, they can't. Rule number one. This is called encapsulation. You put the data and behavior together inside a structure. From now on, we're going to call that a class. Class, structure, potatoes, potatoes. Say in C++. Interview question. What is the difference between a structure in C and a structure in C++? In C++, structures are classes. They can hold functions. In C, they can. Got it? Got it? Now, because these are special functions, C++ refers to them as member functions. OK? C++ refers to as member functions. Object-oriented terminology refers to them as methods. So when I say this class has three methods, it means it has three functions, three member functions. Why do they call it member functions? Because C++ can have standalone functions. It's one of those uh, object-oriented languages that still lets you go back and do crappy things if you want to. Okay? Actually, they make fun of C++ because of that. You know C++, what the plus plus is after C? What is plus plus in C? Plus plus. Increment, it adds one, right? If you write it after the variable, what happens? It adds it after the line. So they said the name of C++ has a bug in it. Because the object orientation aspect will be added after the, the program is not used anymore. <laughs> so that's the thing. So plus plus of the C, it means C with one more feature, which is object orientation. So that's number one. <clears throat> Encapsulation, putting the data and behavior together. Are we okay? Are we okay with that? <clears throat> An airplane can fly, correct? A pigeon can fly, correct? What is the method for an airplane to fly? Fly. What is the method for the pigeon to fly? Fly. They both do the same action, correct? So when you say an airplane fly, airplane does its wings like this. No, it's a different type of flying, right? But they are both flying, correct? That's rule number two of object orientation, the second pillar. We call it polymorphism, many shapes. Methods can have the same name but perform different actions based on their owner. You have flying. And you can write, now you can actually write functions in C, C++ that they have the same name, but the arguments are different. There's no problem with that. In C, you couldn't do that. In C++, you can. C++ says you can have the same function doing different things, and it's called polymorphism. Now, polymorphism has many different shapes. We're going to learn at the end of the semester when we learn them all. But it comes in many different shapes and forms. If you have the same, same function, 
with different arguments, it is polymorphism, what we call it overloading. So we essentially say we are overloading a function to do something else, and the compiler recognizes it because the arguments are different. If you are saying a print over here, and the print accepts an integer, and the other print doesn't, compiler will understand when you say print and you put a 5 in there, because it knows an integer is being passed, so you're calling the one that is integer. Okay, so it's not really the same function. <laughs> there are two different functions, but it's, the names are the same. So that's one of the weakest types of polymorphism that we have. We have very strong ones too. We come to the point that you have functions that are identical, but they run differently based on where they come from. That's called polymorphism. That's the second pillar. Are we okay with this? And the third thing that we have over here is reusing code. You reuse your code in C, plus, in C language by reusing functions, creating modules, hopefully, like workshop one, that is up, by the way. We can start working on it. Okay? So you can, uh, you, you start working, uh, 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 see, this is how it gets distracted. So uh, we reuse our code in C language by uh, creating different functions. Okay? Put them in a module and Organize it like that. So we have different modules. We have modules that, that does standard input output printing, and we put it in stdio.h, and we include it and so on and so forth. By the way, you notice that the header files in C, C++ doesn't have a .h at the end anymore. Okay? And because C++ uh, has a mother called C, it knows everything that C does. So you can still use standard input output here, but the difference is that you don't put h at the end. You start it with a C at the beginning. So if I wanted to, for example, do string header file over here, instead of writing, instead of writing include string.h, you write C string. It means this header file comes from C. Okay? Well, we'll learn all that. This is, by the way, all the code that you see over here is just some scribble that I'm doing over there. I'm going to talk about all these things in detail that we are going. Okay, so just uh, be aware of that. <clears throat> yeah, so I will just, just there. this code has no use. I'm just writing something to give you some hint of things that are coming. How does C++ reuse this code? Reuse code. Let's say you are at a place that there are no motorcycles. There is no such thing. But they have lots of bicycles. And they have lots of cars. So the person over there have never seen a motorcycle in their life. And they tell you, oh, you said you have a motorcycle. What is a motorcycle? I say, you have a bicycle, right? So put an engine on it. That's a motorcycle. They know everything now. This is called inheritance. You have an already existing object called a bicycle. You get everything that a bicycle has. You create a new class out of it, add some features to it, make it better, reusing everything the old one has, and call it something new. And always inheritance has an is a relationship. A bicycle, a motorcycle is a bicycle. A bicycle is a vehicle. A car is a vehicle. A motorcycle is a vehicle, so we can classify things like that. So a vehicle's job is to transport people, right? So all these things are vehicles. So if I told you Schmigli dinghy is a vehicle, you know Schmigli dinghy is a thing that they put stuff in it and they carry it around. I don't need to explain that to you. That's how reusing code works. Too complicated to give you an example now. But that's how we're going to do it. We're going to give you something, and I'm going to tell you, hey, this is the, the class that we have. It does this and this. Write a class for me that is that class what adds these features. So you simply inherit everything that that thing does comes over here. All you guys know how to drive a car, right? If you have the driver's license, OK? So, so it doesn't matter what type of car. You know what a car is. I don't have to give you the build and make and model. They're all the same. They have a brake pedal over there. One is electric, the other one is gas, the other one is uh, diesel, but they all work the same way. They're all cars. They have a steering wheel. They, 
they all stop the way the same way, they all accelerate the same way. And that's how we reuse code. We have an object, we know how the object works, we get the object, we simply inherit and add a few features to it, and voila, we have something new that is good for the thing that we have. This is the third pillar. So this is, and this is going to be in your first quiz, okay? What are the three pillars of object orientation? It's encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Encapsulate is to putting the data and behavior together and package it in one place. That means we are getting close to the end, okay? Encapsulation means putting the data and behavior together. Data, behavior. So behavior knows what the data is. And essentially, when you look at it, you know this from C syntax. All the variables inside the student are global to their functions. Exactly C syntax. So there's nothing magical happening here. Of course, because they are inside the student, outside of the student, these are not visible. Mission accomplished. OK? So that uh, creates some kind of a privacy. So, but anyways. So encapsulation, putting the data and behavior in together, together in, a, in a class. What is a class? The structure that you had, the same thing. Polymorphism is to be able to, to do the same thing in different ways. You can have functions that do the same thing. Essentially, they have the same name, but they perform different things based on how they are designed. Details we're going to go later. And we have inheritance, which is essentially reusing the code, which means we create an encapsulated class. And we can reuse it in many classes that implement the same thing. OK? So if I want to create an application for Seneca, I can create something called an employee if I'm in the HR department. Employee has all the features that employee needs. Everything, pay, sick leaves, everything that we have, right? Then I'm going to inherit that employee into a professor and inherit that employee into an admin worker or an office clerk or something. They are all employees. So I don't need to design how they are getting paid again. I don't need to design putting employee numbers for them. I don't need to do anything that an employee needs to do. All I need to do is that a professor is an employee that teaches. Uh, a person in, student, in registration is an employee who, who registers students. So they all come in the same aspects, adding few features. That's inheritance, and that's object orientation. We're going to learn that in uh, three, four months that we are coming through. OK? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? So have a beautiful day. Next day you are coming is a lecture. We don't have a lab. OK? Everybody be there. And probably I'm going to create something so you can practice your submission thingy from the lab. OK? So, so uh, be there. Next time you're coming is not a lab, it's a lecture. And the next lab is a lab. <laughs>